In my first tutorial, I explained the basics of MicroWebOffice and the main elements of the user interface. In this tutorial, we will be setting up a very simple simulation of a uh, potential divider circuit and we will be looking at how to extract um, values from the simulation in, in a simple and intuitive manner by adding annotations to the circuit and how to use the tuning tool in microwave office. First of all, we uh, start from the project tab and uh, from the circuit schematic section, we right click on circuit schematic, click on new schematic and then give it a name. You can insert uh, spaces in here, it's not a problem at all. Let's call it DC power transfer. So we've got our schematic diagram uh, now here. Now what you can do once you've got elements on there is to just uh, click on this icon which will maximize uh, uh, the size of, your, of, your, of the elements in your schematic so as to fit in, in the window, uh, thereby making it as, as visible as possible um, what, you've, what you've drawn in there. There are two ways to fetch uh, the elements that you're going to use in, uh, in your schematic. Uh, the first and most classic method is to click on the Elements tab and then to uh, look at a specific subcategory and pick the element from there. For example, I will need a DC voltage source, so I will just go and look into Sources, uh, DC, and I can easily find a DC voltage source over there. It, you, you may notice that if you hover over with the mouse, uh, you can see what, what each element represents. You can also right click on the element and uh, click select element help and this will open up a, uh, the, the help window for the uh, respective element. Having said that, if you know uh, the name of the element there is a much easier way to, to fetch it and that is by pressing Control L. This browser opens up and uh, you just type in what you're looking for, in this case is DC voltage source and by double clicking on that element you can just then place it in your schematic. If you were to fetch the element from the uh, elements tab you would just need to drag and drop it onto your schematic, like so. Similarly, for a resistor, for instance, you could just take a look at the lumped element um, category under the elements tab and click on resistor, click on resistor, drag it on the schematic and just place it with the, with a left click. Again, uh, you could have used Control L and typed in res you can see that the resistor is just there, double click on it and then click once to place it on the schematic. So now that we've looked at the two main ways to uh, fetch uh, the elements for our schematic, let's go back to our DC power transfer schematic and I will be using the control L method to fetch the elements from now on. So first of all we need a DC voltage source Uh, we need to uh, put a ground connection there as a ground reference which you can fetch from uh, the, uh, the uh, icon on the, on the top bar. And then we need a couple of resistors to build a potential divider. Again, we'll press Ctrl L, type in RES, double click and here you are. If you want to make a copy of this resistor, just click on it, press Ctrl C and Ctrl V and here's your other resistor. To rotate the element, all you need to do is just right click. So what I'm doing now is just right clicking until I find the right orientation and then left click to place it. Again, we'll fetch a ground which we'll put on this end of the resistor and to wire things together, all you need to do is just hover over with the mouse on the terminal, click with the left key of the mouse 
and then again left click on the other terminal to create a connection. As you can see, as you move to the terminal of an element, the cursor turns into the wiring tool. Now we'll uh, make life easier for us and we'll change the uh, DC voltage source to 2 volts. So this makes calculations quite intuitive. We'll also change the resistor values to 50 ohms for both resistors. Um, this is kind of uh, um, a good thing to do because we'll be looking at 50 ohm systems in the future when we move on to AC circuits. Okay, so we've got our schematic together. Uh, it was quite easy to build. And the uh, other way uh, to uh, change uh, element um, parameters is to uh, right click on them and select properties. You can see that a properties window uh, comes up and I could have changed my voltage source value from here instead of just doing it on the schematic by double clicking on the value. Same thing for the resistor, you just right click, select properties and again you could have changed the value there. There are other options there which we won't be looking at just now, but we will later on. The easiest way with a DC circuit to actually see what's going on is to add annotations. Annotation can show you um, DC values or average AC values directly on the schematic. And um, so you could, for example, select to annotate all the currents and voltages um, throughout the circuit or the power that each element is uh, absorbing. First of all, let's click on the View All icon to maximize our schematic. And then let's go to Draw and add annotation. This window opens up, which allows you to choose a number of measurements. Uh, the ones that we're interested in uh, are the seeing the current uh, uh, flowing through the circuit and the voltage across each element for now. So you can, if, you can click, if you click on any of these measurements you can see what they actually do. So for example DCIA uh, annotates the C input current uh, for all elements. Uh, you need to select which schematic, which schematic you want to do that for. In this case we've only got one. And then click on apply. Then we want to see the uh, voltages for each two terminal element. And so we select DCVA E and click on apply yet again. Then click OK. Now, when we click on the analyze icon, uh, which you can see up here on the toolbar, we should see the value of the current and voltage for each element that's on our schematic. So you can see that, as expected, uh, we've got a 20 milliamp current going through the circuit. That's a 2 volts divided by 100 ohms, which is the total resistance of the circuit. And uh, obviously this the same current going through each element, 20 milliamps. And the voltage drop across each of the resistors is the same, and it's 1 volt. And it's a perfect potential divider. Now, uh, the other annotation that we may, we may want to add uh, to illustrate the principles of uh, the maximum power transfer theorem is the power for each element. So we go back to our draw menu and click on add annotation and if we click on DC PWRA uh, that uh, tells us that this annotates the C power for all elements and this is what we want. So we click on apply and OK and then we simulate you can see that now the power for each element has been annotated. Another very useful tool to have with Microwave Office is the ability to tune the values uh, and of any of the elements. That could be, for example, the um, value of the voltage source or the value of the resistance uh, for any of the resistors and see in real time how that changes the magnitudes which are displayed through the annotations. Another thing that we may want to do, uh, simply because on, on this particular resistor things are looking a little bit messy, is just click and drag. And this makes things a little bit clearer. So I'll just re-simulate quickly 
And then what we can do is click on the screwdriver icon, which is our tune tool. And whatever you can see that the cursor has changed to a screwdriver shape. And uh, when, when you click uh, wh whichever quantity with that very cursor, um, you will be able to then uh, tune it and see how the um, values that the simulation has calculated change as that very value is changed. So I'm clicking on the value of the resistance of the source and load resistances. And then I can open the tune, uh, the tuner. This window opens up, you can see that I've got R1 and R2 there. And now, if I change either of those two, I'll see how the values of currents and voltages change in the circuit. So let's start with the source resistance. If I increase it, you can see that uh, the overall current will decrease, and also the power dissipated across uh, the source resistance will be higher than the power dissipated across the load resistor. Obviously, the current through the resistors is the same, so the one with the higher resistance will dissipate more power. We can then revert to the 50 ohm value for the source resistance, and we can change the load resistance. A similar thing should happen if I increase the value to 100 ohms. As you can see now, uh, more power is dissipated in the resistor. Now, uh, in a normal system, what we'd have would be a voltage source and a source resistance. And you can't change the source resistance. What you can change is the load resistance. We can see that if we increase the load resistance, the power dissipated across it, and hence the power transferred to it, decreases. But equally, if we go back to our initial value, if we decrease the load resistance, the same thing happens. The power dissipated across, is, across it diminishes. So there is an optimum value, which is uh, the uh, same value as the source resistance, which you can pick for the load resistance in order to have maximum power transfer. However, uh, we, this is a very well-known theorem, and it's a, it's a pretty intuitive thing. However, uh, we'll uh, next set up a simulation which will allow us to, uh, to verify the maximum power transfer theorem.